Okay, we're talking uh, cholesterol, we're talking its relationship to blood sugar, all as it relates to the liver and to arginine, and we're going to continue talking about that here in a minute, but I just want to start off with this little reminder that showed up in my life this past week or this last week. A couple of reminders that I found relevant to this whole, uh, the whole bright side philosophy of health and wellness that we talk about every day. So first of all, last week part of my dad died. Basically, he had a stroke. He lost some of his personality, who he was, how I knew him for the last 54 years. Essentially, part of him died. And while he's still around, still around for the most part, praise God, it's a slightly different, less present, less aware version of him. And I'm so glad I stayed in touch with him uh, pretty much on a daily basis. I don't live near him, but I stayed in touch with him. So I, I got a good hit on my dad before, before part of him left, left the planet, basically. Then my friend uh, Lanny's mom passed away. She was 95. She had a nice life. But it reminded me, along with my dad's stroke, about how short our lives really are. I'm 54. I got maybe 30 years left, 25 years, maybe 40 years if I'm lucky. That's not a heck of a lot of time. And we're all pretty much in the same boat. How fast does 10 years, 20 years, 30 years go by? It's like a blink. That's all we have, folks. And for many of us, the degenerative process kicks in way, way early. For millions and millions of Americans, we start breaking down by our 20s, certainly by our 30s. If you're on the fence about these ideas that we talk about here using, of using nutritional supplements and dietary strategies and changing the way you eat and, and deep breathing, if even a part of you is thinking that supplements are too expensive or my doctor didn't tell me or I don't believe in nutritional medicine, you might want to consider examining your beliefs a little more closely. This is a high stakes game here, folks. You might want to consider, if you're one of those folks who thinks, well, nutrition, I don't know about that. That sounds sort of wacky. It's never been proven. I hear, still hear that from doctors. Never been, no evidence. I have a doctor friend who talks about evidence-based medicine, and he wants to see data. I went to dinner with a pharmacist a couple of weeks ago or last week, and she wanted to see the data and the research. Listen, if you are still stuck on this old idea that nutrition and foods and, and dietary strategies and lifestyle strategies are some kind of silly, airy-fairy notion, and that it's all about health is all about medicine, you might want to start to examine your beliefs a little bit more closely. And it also means that we might want to pay attention to how we live our lives from a mental standpoint, from an emotional standpoint, the thoughts we think, the feelings we feel, as well as as well as uh, incorporating a little sense of spirituality into our lives, whatever that is, whatever that is, a sense of higher power, a sense that there's something bigger than us. It's so, so important given the short nature of our lives. It's, we have hardly anything. Do you really want to go through the last 20 or 30 years of your life with a degenerative disease? Yes, we're all going to die. I understand this. But you don't want to rot. <laughs> you don't want to degenerate. You don't want to suffer. Yes, we're all going to die, but we don't all have to suffer. And the way we get out of suffering is by using these ideas, the ideas that I call the bright side philosophy. What's more, I call this program the bright side, and I call this philosophy the bright side philosophy because it says that we can use our diseases, we can use our suffering, we can use our bodily dysfunction as messages that tell us what we need to do. We can use our high blood pressure as a message from our body that tells us what we need to do. We can use our diabetes as a message from our blood, from a message from our bodies that's telling us where we need to go, where we, how we need to approach things. Our diseases are our friends. Our health challenges are our teachers. They're pointing us in the direction we need to go. And the modern medical model is about shutting these symptoms down. It's about suppression. It's not about incorporating the information. It's not about using the information. It's about shutting the information down. And this is why the medical model is a failure, an utter failure. It's not about doctors. It's about the model. It's not about the individuals practicing the model. It's about the model itself that says that all we can do is suppress our symptomology. And I'm here to tell you, Symptomology is not supposed to be suppressed. It's supposed to be understood. And that's what this program is about. All right. So I just want to get that out of the way. I just want to, to point that out. We talk a lot about the minutia and the specifics of how the body works, but sometimes it's, I think it's important to, to, really, uh, to really appreciate or at least talk about the philosophical underpinnings of everything that we talk about in terms of specifics. So back to specifics. 
continuing on with this lunacy of pushing this crazy idea that most of us have bought into, certainly not most of us on the, listening to the program maybe, but, but, but most of us Americans have bought into, that we can poison our body and our body's cholesterol manufacturing system and somehow be the better for it. This is so important. Millions of Americans are on one or another a, a statin drug. One out of eight or nine Americans are on a statin drug. One out of every four Americans over the age of 45 is on a statin drug. Can you imagine this? 25% of Americans over the age of 45 is on a statin drug. 10% of our culture, more, 12, 13% of the entire population is on a statin drug. This despite the fact that there's hundreds of studies showing their toxicity and their relationships to all kinds of health issues. All right, we're going to continue this when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 855-660-4261 is our number. We'll be back after this. Okay, so got 10%, 12%, 13% of Americans on a statin drug. You got 25%, one out of four Americans taking a statin drug. Uh, over the age of 45, taking a statin drug. Doctors want kids to take statin drugs. They want statin drugs to be over the counter. This despite the fact that there are hundreds of studies, aside from common sense, aside from the common sense notion that taking a drug that poisons your liver, literally, not figuratively, taking a drug that poisons the cholesterol manufacturing capabilities of cells, it, just common sense tells you it, it's not a good idea. But you got, on top of that, you got hundreds of studies. Dr. McCullough says 900 studies proving the toxicity of statin drugs, showing their relationship to all kinds of health issues from muscle problems to diabetes to brain issues to memory problems, even to cancer itself, the, the uh, ultimate disease. So what do you do about cholesterol? First of all, got to understand, if your cholesterol levels and your blood fat levels, and they go together, blood fats and blood cholesterol, if your cholesterol levels are, are, are somehow out of whack, if your blood levels of cholesterol are too high, you have a sugar issue. Cholesterol control is sugar control. Cholesterol control equals sugar control. There's a reason why diabetes and elevated blood cholesterol go hand in hand. They're linked. But the thing about diabetes is, and, and dysglycemia, which is a fancy way of saying messed up blood sugar, is how you determine dysglycemia or diabetes is arbitrary. Or how you determine diabetes itself, the disease diabetes, is arbitrary. We don't know. If I have so many people tell me, well, I have my blood sugar tested and the doctor says I'm not a diabetic, but everything about their health, everything about their body, their appearance, their symptomology screams diabetes, screams dysglycemia. Diabetes is a technical term, or it's a, a specific term referring to a standard of blood sugar, uh, of blood sugar dysfunction. Dysglycemia is not a technical term, it's a generic term. Dysglycemia, messed up blood sugar is a generic term. Diabetes is a specific term from, uh, that doctors will give you if you have, meet certain criteria. But you don't have to meet those criteria and be an official diabetic to have messed up blood sugar. We all have messed up blood sugar, even if you're not a diabetic. Even if you're not been sanctified and, and officially pronounced a diabetic. Even if you're not officially considered a diabetic by this arbitrary measurement of the medical model. By this arbitrary measurement of the people, whoever they are, who set up these diagnostic standards. We all have messed up blood sugar, or most of us anyway, once we reach a certain point in life. And it doesn't matter if you're diabetic officially, according to your doctor or the American Diabetes Association. According to the American Diabetes Association, there's three main tests that officially determine whether you have diabetes. I hate that when people say, I have diabetes, or I have depression, or I have cancer. You don't have a disease. There's a process that is occurring in the body. When you say you have a disease, you own it. You're condemned. That's it. You got it. But if you say there's a, a blood sugar dysfunction process that's occurring in my body, that means you can change it. You can change the process. Process is a verb. Diabetes is a noun. A disease is a noun. We are verbs. There's a diff the difference between a verb and a noun is a verb can, is always changing. A noun is set. This identification with our diseases, this nominalization, this giving our diseases a name is so disempowering. That according to the American Diabetes Association, you've got three main tests that determine whether we're a diabetic or not. You've got the A1C test, and that measures uh, blood glucose over an average. You're considered a, di a diabetic 
uh, if your A1C is six, uh, greater than 6.5%, then you get the fasting blood glucose test. That's probably the most famous of the diabetes tests. And as the name implies, you have to fast for eight hours or so, and you're considered a diabetic if your blood glucose is over 126. They measure it in milligrams per deciliter. That works out to about uh, a teaspoon of, of glucose for the entire gallon or so of blood that circulates in your body. If it's more than that, you're considered a diabetic. And then the third test is the oral glucose test or oral glucose tolerance test. And this is a, a measurement of blood sugar before you drink a super sweet glucose drink and after you drink a super sweet glucose drink. And if your blood sugar rises really, really fast and it doesn't go down, they consider you a diabetic. If your blood sugar is over 200 after you take this drink, you're officially a diabetic. The problem with these tests is no one knows just exactly what a healthy or appropriate blood sugar should be. You can't go by numbers. You can't treat yourself by numbers. Why do we do this? For money, for insurance, for business reasons. This is the only reason why we get diagnosed by our disease states, not by our symptoms, but by our numbers. Numbers and determinations and uh, all these testing, tests and test scores and criteria, these are all based on bell curves. They're all based on reference values. They're all based on statistics. We're not statistics. Human beings are not statistics. We're individuals. To take care of our health, we have to recognize our specific individual natures and the specifics of our symptoms. Your symptoms are your tests. Your symptoms are your, are your criteria. You want to understand the symptoms, not the numbers. The numbers only matter to insurance companies. They only matter to, to doctors who are not intuitive enough to understand how your body works, who want to go into a book put out by the drug companies, of course, or the insurance companies, and just look at your numbers and tell you what kind of drug you need to take or what kind of dis specific disease you have based on your numbers. To take care of our health, we have to be recognized as individuals. We have to recognize ourselves as individuals. To superimpose statistics and bell curves on top of individuals is bad science. Does it make sense to anyone that if your fasting blood sugar is recorded as 125, then you're not a diabetic. But if you're at 126, all of a sudden you have a disease. If you're at 125.9, you're fine. But if you're at 126, boom, you got a disease. Does that make sense to anybody? If we're at 125.9, we can go about our business as usual, eat whatever we want, do whatever we want, because we're healthy. No, we're not healthy. Our blood sugar is still way off if we have symptoms, if we have hypertension, if we have uh, a chronic fatigue, if we have thyroid problems, if we have, God forbid, cancer or autoimmune, or autoimmune problems, you can rest assured you got a blood sugar problem. In fact, I'm going to tell you, if you have any degenerative disease, rest assured you have dysglycemia or a blood sugar problem. And just because the medical model hasn't officially pronounced us diseased, our sugar chemistry is definitely whacked out and we are most assuredly not healthy. Pretty much all adults who are subsisting on the SAD, the standard American diet, the SAD, can assume their blood sugar control is not good. All right, hang tight. Got a couple more things to say, and then we'll take your phone calls. 855-660-4261 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We will be back right after this. Don't go away. Okay, tomorrow we'll continue talking about arginine and how arginine, arginine is related to this whole idea of cholesterol and the liver and blood sugar. Arginine, not surprisingly, is uh, in addition to helping, uh, helping the body process sugar, is also very important for helping lower cholesterol. It's also one of the most important nutrients that you could use for your liver. Think cholesterol, think blood sugar. Think cholesterol, think sugar. And that means if you have high cholesterol, it isn't a statin drug issue. It's not even a medical issue for that matter. But we'll continue talking about this tomorrow on the bright side. And uh, I'm going to take your calls here in a second. I want to read you this letter I got from Patrick. Patrick says he's a longtime listener and fan. Here's a testimony from my mother, June. In December 2013, my mom phoned me because she was feeling poorly. She was on two blood pressure medications. She had no energy. No kidding. Of course not. Those blood pressure medicines basically stop your heart. Her white blood cell count was very high. She did not think she would last long. My mom had been admitted to the hospital a few days before going to the ER for feeling so badly. The doctors immediately prescribed antibiotics, assuming she had some kind of infection. She was dehydrated. She needed bed rest, according to the doctors. She was discharged after two days, made an appointment to see her GP, checked her blood pressure, and found the pressure to be elevated, and white blood cells were also elevated. So he recommended that she go to a blood specialist, and Patrick says, that was when I became involved. You see, my mother is 80 years old, and I live far away in Spain. But tele by telephone, I, su I suggested various approaches based on listening to you. 
Dr. Wallach and Dr. Glidden. I could tell my mother was headed in the wrong direction health-wise and that she was going downhill fast. I could also see that the doctors had no clue about what to do other than set her up for some sort of cancer and treatment. The blood doctor wanted to perform a bone biopsy. I then suggested to my mother that this was not the correct approach and there were health strategies she could follow that were simpler and less risky. My mom took my advice. She started taking the longevity products. She cleaned up her diet, and the rest is history. This is, I'm reading Patrick's letter here. Now, six months later, my mom looks 30 years younger. Her glowing skin, her, uh, her skin is glowing. Her brain function is extremely high. She's a poster child for longevity. She is now on no meds at all. You hear this, people? Her blood pressure is at 117 over 75. She's 80. No meds. Only supplements and diet. All her symptoms have sub subsided. I want to thank you, Dr. Wallach and Dr. Glidden, for providing me with the information regards Patrick. This, my friends, is what's possible. If you are on medications, this is what's possible. If your doctor has condemned you to some kind of disease name or alphabet syndrome, this is what's possible. And I've been seeing these letters and getting these letters and, and talking to people who have these kinds of stories now since 1997. If you want to get off your meds, let us help you. If you have some kind of symptomology that's making your life miserable, let us help you. If you feel like your life is coming to an end because of all the medications and all the diseases and all the sickness and all the things that are going wrong with your body, let us help you. We can help you. 855-660-4261 is our call-in number. And you can always send me emails at ben at ksco.com. Okay, time to hit the phones. Let's uh, go off to Virginia and welcome Cindy to the bright side. What's going on, Cindy? Hi, Cindy. Um, uh, Cindy. No, no. Hi, Ben. I know, I know. I'm sorry. Um, I have a couple questions for you. You have helped me already. Okay. Um, uh, I am itching very badly. Um, a doctor, unfortunately, told me that I had a low vitamin D level. Okay. He put me on 50,000 international units for 30 days. Okay. Um, I finally was able to remember, because <laughs> I'm the person you're helping with the psychotropic drug withdrawal. Okay. But after a week I started that, I started itching. Now, that was the end of April. There was a doctor then that said to wait three months. I'm still itching very, very badly. Okay, let's um, talk itching my, here. Let's yeah, talk it, about it, itching. Itching it, means attack. When you think okay. of itching, just like I said earl, uh, on the, uh, a few minutes ago, cholesterol means sugar. Uh-huh. You can always link these kinds of things to specific issues. Cholesterol, you always want to link to sugar. Itching, you always want to link to an attack. Itching is the manifestation of, of certain chemicals that are secreted out of the body that cause blood vessels to open up and cause itching chemicals to be released. Itching chemicals are immune system chemicals. So whenever you have rashes, whenever you have itching, Whenever you have redness that appears, like rosacea type redness that appears on the face, those three mm -hmm. things, and also puffiness or swelling, you have some kind of attack that the body's trying to protect itself from. Okay? Now, there's two kinds of attacks basically that can occur with itching. One is attack from the outside and another is attack from the inside. From the outside, sometimes you can get an attack by if you, if you touch something, uh, uh, some people get attacks topical, they're called dermatitis, dermatitis. You can get a topical attack from a, cons a construction material, cement. That's called concrete dermatitis. Flour can do it. Talc can do it. Latex can do it. Various substances can do it, uh, it can cause this immune system reaction, this defensive response, this protective response to an attack topically. But by far and away, the most common way this a defensive response occurs, this immune system activity occurs, this protective mechanism occurs, is from something you're putting inside your body. Now, assuming you're not an IV drug user, and assuming you're not working in a coal mine and breathing in toxic fumes, Pretty much the only place where you're going to get an, a chronic attack in the body is from foods that you're eating. So what you want to do when you have itching and rashes is you want to start going, go back to our triangle. Go back to the root of the triangle, the first point in the triangle, and that's the digestive system. So look for symptoms in the digestive system. In fact, any skin problems, the skin is like the digestive system outside in, or the digestive system is like the skin inside out. Any skin care issue or any skin care problem, including itching, including rashes, including dry skin, including rosacea, including acne, whatever, you want to work back to the digestive system. Now, the fact that you have low vitamin D also implies that you have a digestive system problem because vitamin D is activated in the digestive system. 
And the fact that you're getting 50,000 IU of vitamin D may not be in your favor because you may not be or may not be helpful because you're not you're not may not be activating the vitamin D if you have a liver problem or if you have a kidney problem or if you have a probiotic issue. Now, I'm guessing, Cindy, if you've been on pharmaceuticals for a long time, and I think I remember you saying you were on, yeah. was it SSRIs, was it, as I recall? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you've been on pharmacology for a long time, serotonin is a digestive hormone. That means if you're on an SSRI, especially for a long time, it's almost impossible not to have a digestive problem. You have to have had, been having some digestive issues, cramping, uh, diarrhea, loose stools, something. And what you want to do is you want to link those up to specific foods. Now, if you've had long-term, did you have long-term loose stools, long-term diarrhea or anything like that? I have very, very bad constipation right okay, now. Okay, so you got constipation right now. I got you're constipation. Off the, well, while you're on, on the drugs? Um, very badly. Coming okay. off of them is better. Somebody else is helping me with the bone soup and okay. the apple cider vinegar. And, wow, I realized that in the past 10 days, I actually have had three bowel movements already today. There, now we're getting, all right, okay. we're on the right track. We're on yeah. the right track. So what you really want to be doing right now is you want to be focusing on your digestive health. Simplify. K-I-S-S. Keep it simplify. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. We'll put it that way, okay? Keep it simple. Go to the digestive system. Look to foods. See if, it, can you fast for a day or two? Is that possible for well, you to do? Well, you just gave a very interesting talk. Because I was diagnosed as a type one diabetic in 1965, so they've always okay. told me I can't fast. <laughs> you know, no, you can you can still fast. You just got to make sure that you're doing liquids or something easy to process. Hang tight, Cindy. We got to take a break, and I'll finish up uh, when we come back from our break. If you're on hold, stay there. We'll get to you when we come back from our break as well. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to the Bright Side, and we are coming back at you with more good health information right after this. Don't go away. <laughs> Okay, we are back on the bright side talking to Cindy uh, in Virginia. Hey, Cindy. Yeah, um, the okay. other question I have is on Midodrin during the psychotropic drug withdrawal. I got very dizzy, so they put me on Midodrin. Um, they had me doing 5 milligrams. Then I myself moved it down to 2.5 because the doctor was gone. And then it's been 11 uh, months now. Uh, I'm not I sure did... what you're saying. Are you saying Midodrin? Midodrin, Midodrin. Spell it. It's for a. It. Um, I I know it is M I D like dog. O yeah. Yeah. D like dog. Okay. R like rat. Okay. I N like Nancy E. Okay, I know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, that's a uh, that's a uh, anti hype for the blood pressure. They're giving you that for the blood pressure, but but that's silly. Yeah. That's uh, just craziness. I, I, Here. Yeah, I I I came off of it. Okay, I took myself off of that. Okay. Because um, I've been you listening have to you. Okay. okay. I, my question is this: For some reason, I'm swelling in my breast. My watch won't even fit now. And no, it's, it's not for some reason. <laughs> it's not it's for not some for reason. Some, it's not. It's. I don't know. Why. Let me. It's, let's sim remember. I, before we went to break, I said simplify. You've got a whole constellation right. of symptoms, and if you try to approach each one of those symptoms, you're going to go nuts, and your doctors are going to make a lot of money. They'll go nuts too, but they'll make a lot of money while they're going nuts. You're just going to keep taking drugs and having and, and going back to doctors. So we want to simplify. This is so important for Cindy and everybody else. When you have a constellation of symptoms, a constellation means you have all these various symptoms, just like. Do you, do you ever look at the stars when you were a kid or you study the constellations when you were a kid and they'll show you how you get the Big Dipper out of four or five different stars? You know what I'm talking about? Ella? Yeah, I do. You, right? That's mm -hmm. called a constellation. They'll put together a bunch of stars and then all of a sudden you'll, a, a picture will be formed, a Big Dipper or an archer or, or, or a fish or whatever. I never really understood how they could find an archer or a Big Dipper out of the, the points, but they did. Well, it's the same thing with the body. You don't want to be approaching the different stars. You want to be approaching the Big Dipper. And you use the stars to form a picture. That's what a constellation of symptoms does for you. So what we want to do with your constellation of symptoms is we want to form a big picture of what's happening in your body. So you've got all this symptomology. You've got fluid retention. You've got, the, you're, you're, you've got dizziness. You've got uh, a, a mental health issues. You've got a circulatory problem with hypotension. All of this is secondary to things not moving through the body correctly. Fluids are not moving through the body correctly. So what does this tell me? Well, it tells me that something is getting into your body that's causing the fluid system to, number one, become sludgy and sticky, and number two, to activate the emergency response. You have basically an emergency response going in your body. That's everything. Does that make sense so far? 
Yes, it does. Okay. So then we have to say, what is the emergency response coming in from? Well, is it magical? Is something sprinkling pixie dust on you from afar, from, a, from above? No. There's something you're doing on a regular basis that's making your body think there's an emergency. Now, the most likely suspect is going to be food, especially when you tell me you've been const chronically constipated. Oh, yeah. So, so you got to go to the food thing and the digestive system first and foremost, first, before anything else. Before anything else. Now, yes, you're going to need your blood sugar. Take care of your blood sugar. You definitely want to be on the Mighty 90. There's lots of other things you want to do, but... But step by step, the longest journey begins with a single step. Rome wasn't built in a day. You've got to do step by step. And I'm going to let you go here because I want to get to a few more calls. But okay. first, but, but let me just tell you a couple things. Get a on a food diary immediately. Get a notebook. But keep track of every single morsel that goes in your mouth and how you feel two hours later, four hours later, six hours later, eight hours later. And notice a trend. It'll take a couple weeks to start to notice a trend, a pattern. Get on the BioLumin Nightly Essence immediately. You should do it today. Pay three in the morning, three at night. If you're not on the Healthy Star Pack, you definitely want to be on that. Start sipping on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine all day long. Sipping on it. Put it in a water bottle and sip on it. Now, you probably would, would, it, uh, wouldn't be a bad idea for you to throw in the Z-Radical as well. And there's a few other things that you're going to want to do too. But this is a start for you. You will guaranteed start to notice results once you get this food thing under control. And then either call us back or send, it, send me an email and I'll work with you uh, personally. Okay? All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. God bless you, Cindy. Take care. Okay, let's see. John and Austin, I'm going to go real fast with you, buddy. What's, what's cooking? What's on your mind? Are you talking to me, John? You, John. John in Austin, oh, Texas. Yes, hey, sir. Hey, it's my first time to call. I'm calling on behalf of a friend of mine okay. who uh, is at work right now, but I'm recording this for him. He's been okay. dealing with shingles for oh, okay. uh, about let's four talk weeks. Let's talk shingles, okay? Shingles only occurs in a body that is, uh, that is somehow compromised. The immune system is not doing its business. The shingles virus is the herpes virus, and the herpes virus is known as an opportunistic virus, which means it sits around waiting for an opportunity to pounce. It's, it just kind of hangs out, and then when the immune system is suppressed, and it could be from drugs, it could be from sugar, it can be from some other degenerative crisis that's going on, it could be from surgery, it can be from overall poor health, the, the shingles virus pounces. So what do you do? Well, first of all, to take care of the shingles right away, you want to start using some immune boosters, and uh, selenium is maybe the most important mineral. Well, selenium and zinc are probably the two most important minerals, so 50 milligrams of zinc picolinate a day, and get on the ultimate selenium, uh, maybe two to 400 micrograms a day. Uh, vitamin C is also very important for boosting the immune system. Get your friend on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Have them sipping on it all day long. But even more important, that's to take care of the shingles right away and to speed up the healing. But even more importantly, we want to know why the body is suppressed. And again, keeping it simple, the most likely place where suppression or uh, compromise comes in, where the immune system becomes suppressed, is through the digestive system. So focus on problem foods. It's very unlikely that a guy who has shingles, how old is your friend, by the way, John? Uh, about 63. Okay, so it's very unusual for a 63-year-old to get shingles without having some kind of digestive compromise. So have him focus on the digestive system. You may want to get him on the BioLumin Nightly Essence as well. Do the whole food diary thing and eliminate problem foods. And keep in mind that sugar and refined flour are mortal enemies for the immune system. Mortal enemies for the immune system. And if, you, if he is indulging, if anybody's indulging in these kinds of foods, make sure you sip on your Beyond Tangy Tangerine afterwards to mitigate some of the damage, to reduce some of the impact of the these kinds of foods. So focus on uh, the digestive tract. You can use those nutrients, the, the, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and the Selenium and the Zinc to help boost, uh, strengthen the immune system in the short term, but focus on whatever's suppressing the immune system. Most likely it's going to be in the digestive tract. And uh, that means the food diary, the Biolumin Nightly Essence, and the Z Radical as well. That might not be a bad idea. Okay, John, I got to move on. I got to take a couple more calls. Okay, bro? Thanks for your time. Thanks. God bless, man. Okay, let's see. Uh, Ron, also in Austin, what's going on? Got a couple minutes here. Austin? Yes, sir. Uh, Ron, what's, what's up, buddy? There we go. Now, the second guy in Austin. Yeah, I've, um, uh, uh, I've been with you quite a while, um, um, and uh, I've, I've lost about 100 pounds. Wow. But uh, the, uh, the, 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 the major thing is, in the last, oh, I'd say, couple of months, I've had consistent dizziness. Okay. And, and it's, it only goes away when I lie down, when Got I'm it. horizontal. Okay, when let me, I stand let me... up. Let me tell you about that. 
That's called posture hypotension, postural hypotension. That means you change your posture, you stand up, you get dizzy. It's not uncommon. It's, it's connected to salt and the adrenal glands and a few other nutrients. So you gotta make sure that you're getting your minerals, you gotta make sure that you're uh, getting your uh, adrenal nutrients like vitamin C, um, and then also zinc, which is a mineral of course, and uh, the B complex as well, maybe even vitamin B12 shots. These are how you wanna approach this. Nutrients for the adrenal glands. Number one, uh, minerals, get on, I'm sure you're on the Healthy Start Pack, but you you might want to consider adding in something like the Ultimate Classic. You also might want to do some Celtic sea salt in water and sip on that. That's very helpful for the adrenal glands. Deep breathing techniques, super duper duper important for the adrenal glands. Sitting down on the couch before you stand up uh, and just taking a couple long, slow, deep breaths in through the nose and out through the nose, that can be very helpful as well. And then uh, anything that is causing some kind of stress on the body, whether it's emotional stress, mental stress, or digestive stress, that will also cause adrenal dysfunction. And then um, uh, also blood sugar changes, low blood sugar, so make sure you're eating more fat and, and more protein and less refined carbohydrates and sugar. So focus on the adrenal glands, those are your stress glands, using zinc, using vitamin C, using the Healthy Start Pack, deep breathing techniques, and personally, if it was me, I, I would consider vitamin B12 shots, although you're going to get a good... I, I, yeah, I'm not uh, doing vitamin, I'm, I'm taking 2,000 uh, units of vitamin B, B12. Well, See if you could do the injections. It works a little bit more effectively. All right, but okay. it's an adrenal, adrenal health issue. That's what I'd be focusing on. I'm going to let you go because I want to get one more call in. Thank great, you so much, great. Ron. Bye God bye. bless, bro. Okay, Carl, the Truth Raider. What is up, my friend? Good morning, Pharmacist Ben. A quick commentary, then I have a question for you. The government is sending in lemons. Well, this is what we need to do. We need to turn them away from the allopathic system and get them on the longevity products. A great opportunity. Turning lemons into lemonade. I like that. Now... The question is, I have a swollen gland in my jaw. This is related to dental problems I'm having. And though the, as I was telling you many times before in phone calls, that the metal fillings are coming out. So I'm having. You're taking them out. You're taking them out. You mean, or they're no, falling they're out? Coming, of no, they're fall, They're failing. Oh, okay, that's not good. And they're mercury and stuff too, right? Are they they're, mercury they're fillings coming out? Is it mercury yep, fillings? Okay. Yep. So here's what, here, first of all, selenium chelates mercury. So if you're not doing selenium, you should get on it right away. Sulfur also chelates mercury, and so does vitamin C. Those are three ways to protect yourself from mercury. N-acetylcysteine can also protect you from mercury. You should be doing the N-acetylcysteine also. I'd be doing about 1,000 milligrams a day of that. A couple more things. Oh, vitamin C. I don't know if I said vitamin C. That also is very protective against mercury. Carl, I gotta gotta motivate. Um, call me up. Uh, get, shoot me an uh, email or give me a call. Okay, bro, I'll, I'll help you in person. Now, I'm pharmacist Ben. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks so much for listening. I apologize if I left you on hold. We will be back at you tomorrow with more good health information. Thanks for listening. Have yourselves a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now.